Okay, so now we need to get our plates ready for transformation. Uh, we can check the temperature of our plates. I knew they'd be at room temperature, it's just fun to use the gun. Um, but they should be at room temperature by now and cooled. You can tell that they've completely hardened from when we poured them. Um, again, they're upside down. I haven't labeled them yet, and I'll generally do that after I've got them prepared. Now, we have ampicillin in the auger. So uh, the, any E. coli that gets on there, if it's ampicillin resistant, will live. Any, hopefully, that gets on there that isn't will die, or any other contaminants. Um, but what we don't have on there are the selectable markers or the selectable reagents to screen our bacteria for positive transformants. And what we use for that is IPTG and XGAL. They're two different chemicals, although we have purchased uh, occasionally we purchase this re uh, solution of X-Gal and IPTG combined um, and, or they are separate. Now there is a fridge right here by the cloning area, There's a little freezer on top. Inside of the refrigerator there is some IPTG at 20% 20, uh, 20 and also some X-Gal. So today we're going to use uh, both systems. The reason why we use these is it's a little cheaper than the pre-made stuff. Uh, often, and it gives you good experience with class. We need 7 microliters of IPTG and 40 microliters of XGAL. So first, I'll, I'll do the one that get, has the most volume, that being the XGAL. It's in dimethylformamide, and it's not water, and it's pretty toxic, so you, wanna, you don't want to get this on your skin, and you want to be very, fairly careful with it. Um, but we'll take the 40 microliters for, of the X-Gal. Stick it on, on the center of the plate. Okay. Just going to lay this down. Then we need to spread that out. So I'll, I should have started the burner. This is 70% ethanol. I'll put in a beaker to be ready for this. So I'll flame the container here, or flame the spreader. Now I don't want it to, to deactivate any of the X-Gal, so I just make sure it's cooled off enough. Okay. So we'll spread this X-Gal around, and we want to make sure that we get it evenly spread throughout the plate. And because I squirt it in both cases, whether I use this uh, X-Gal or this pre-made concoction, either way, you want to make it, be sure that you spread it around as best you can. And the middle might have a little better staining, if you will, or resolution on bacteria that have been um, positively selected or that have in transformed fragments in them. Now we need 7 microliters of the IPTG. that on the plate. Now I don't need to sterilize this again. I'm spreading it on the same plate. But we want to make sure that X get, or the IPTG is all over the plate as well. Evenly spread. Now it'll take a little while for it to absorb into the plate. But recall we have an hour while we're waiting for the, uh, for the incubation of the SOC. Um, I'll put the tips in the Waste. I've done this one now. I'm going to turn it over, set it to the side. Once these have all been treated, I'm going to move these plates into the 37 degree incubator. Ideally, we want to put those SOC, the cells that have been incubated in SOC, we've probably only gone over one or two cell divisions, but hopefully those, the new cells that are in that SOC media are intact and, and they're not fragile like the competent cells were. Even so, we want to put those on warm plates. They'll transform or they'll grow much better, spread better when the plates are warm. And uh, we'll have much better success that way. So, once I, to repeat, once I get these plates treated with the X gallon IPTG, I'm going to put them in the incubator, let them warm up a little bit. Um, and once they're at temperature, it should be about the time that, um, that the SOC cells have finished uh, incubating it. 37 degrees on the shaker. 
we'll put those and spread out an aliquot, 100 microliters of those, and we'll spread it out on these plates and let them sit overnight. Now to start this hood, I haven't showed you before, you can turn on the fan, turn on the light, okay? Let's see, so I've taken our samples out of the incubator. The cells were down towards the bottom. I simply inverted it a couple times so that it's resuspended. You can't see it, it's just kind of cloudy. But our SOC control sample looks clear, that's good. We'll stick that in the, in the incubator overnight just to make sure. So. Uh, we need to get out a couple plates for each one. Now remember these are at 37 degrees, so I want to hurry, sorry, I want to hurry before they cool down, that is, because they're at 37 degrees. So I'm going to take 100 microliters from the cell suspensions. So I'm going to first do the treatment or the insert library. Okay. Spread that on there, here, let's flame this, make sure it's sterile. Now we're going to spread the E. coli cells around, remember I don't want to shove them too much to the corners, just spread them around so that uh, we have good coverage, an even coverage of the mix. So that was the treatment, then I'm going to do the control. Give it a little inversion there. Okay. Accidentally touch this to something. Now I'm doing this a little bit risky, if you will, in the sense that I didn't write down what is what. So I should have had a pen here, and as I add things to it, I'll write down what it is. Okay? Now I'm just going to follow the same procedure and do it to two other plates, and uh, then I will take 100 microliters of this control, put it on a plate and uh, we'll see what grows in the morning. All right, so now there's a couple different uh, incubators that we can use for our plates. There's this big one. This is in the middle lab. Um, the, the, there is something to know about this. You just open it up, right? But if I were just to close it, it, it actually hits the bottom here. You have to be careful and lift up the glass door and make sure you hear the door click. There is a thermometer in here, so you can check the, the, the temperature of the incubator. It's at 36 right now. We'll put in these plates to be pre-warmed. Okay, close the door. Just lift it up a little bit, make sure it's all the way shut so it keeps the right temperature. The other incubator is this one here. This one can also be used right now. It is turned, it is on or off? It's on. And it's temperature, it's at about 36. And the, the thermometer, you know, is reading right about the middle of the chamber. We've had a uh, history where the bottom of the chamber is a little warmer than the top part of the chamber. So, you know, you can throw in a th uh, another thermometer or just be careful where you put things. People tend to put them on the top shelf. Upside down, of course, that's how the plates will be incubate and how the E. coli will grow. One more thing about these, both, both incubators, right? You'll notice that if I wanted to change the temperature, it's pretty well taped. That is there for a reason. Don't change the temperature on these incubators. These are kept at 37 at all times. It's not a huge expense or problem having these things always at 37 degrees.